Sail bonny boat like a bird upon the wing Steer for the north for there my heart does lie Now I heed the call from your wailing winds Raise my arms and embrace the sky equipment and raffle prizes <coughs> excuse me and to say thank you to everyone who's had to help to make this happen it's been absolutely amazing emma and i are extremely touched at people's generosity there will be a short break in the middle for you to get some more for refreshments and some drink and raffle tickets and whatever takes your fancy over there um, we would also like to mention Sam Walton and her family who have inspired us to hold this event in honour of our daughter Georgia. Uh, we all have our own memories and remember in our own, our own way. All monies this evening, all monies, uh, will be denoted um, to the Cavalier Centre, the project for disabled riders. So again, we say thank you. Here is something that is a bit of a mystic car, but I prefer to see it as actually it's a way of developing a language between the horse and rider. So I'm going to start the evening off with Carmen, my own horse. Uh, we're going to just go through the basics really and just discuss a bit about the warm-up, a bit about the rider's position. Um, we're also going to talk about how you can make things look seamless like, so it makes it look like the rider's not doing anything and the horse is doing all the work. Uh, after that, we're going to have a short break, and after the, well, hopefully during the hot short break, you can go and get some more to eat and drink if you wish, you can maybe go and shop at Divine. Um, then after the break, we're going to carry on with one of my customers, Rachel. She's going to be riding her own horse, and her horse is working sort of at about medium level and then after Rachel we'll move on to Carrie from the vine itself and she's um, going to be riding her own horse Galanti who's working at, at advanced so hopefully you're all going to enjoy the evening now the first thing I wanted to talk about is the horse's outline everyone well not everyone but novice people Normally when I ask them what is an outline, they say, well, it's actually that the horse's neck is in a pretty shape. Now, that's not strictly true. Yes, when an outline happens, obviously the horse's neck comes rounder, but what you should actually be looking for is, is the whole horse's back which comes rounder, not just the neck. So, whenever we're discussing about an outline, what we actually want is we want the horse to push from its bottom and then it creates like an arch over its back and then it connects to the rein. So actually the head and neck should be the last thing that you think about. So if you imagine like with me holding this schooling whip, if I was to hold the front end and push the back end, it creates a bow. So what you're encouraging to happen is for the horse to actually use its body in the best way so that it can actually do the work to the best of its ability without causing itself injury, hopefully. Um, and get a better balance because dressage is all about balance and I tend to find if you actually just get the horse in a good balance then everything else kind of falls into place. So yeah, that's basically what the evening is going to be about. I didn't warm Carmen up before I came in or before you lot came in because I thought the best place to start up would be the warm up. Now she's feeling quite tense so as you can see she's going to have a bit of an argument with me. Uh, this is where 
I'm just going to start to assess what sort of frame of mind she's in because at the end of the day, it's a big ass for a young horse. I mean, she's only six and she's had about six months off due to injury. Um, so she's not done very much. So she's actually very low mileage. So all I'm doing whilst I'm trotting round to start off with is I'm actually just making sure she's not going to try and put me on the floor. So, this is where one of my favourite expressions comes in, which is, to be a good rider, you actually need to be a bloody good liar. So although I'm sat up here slightly shitting myself, I'm trying not to let her know that. So, in my riding, I'm thinking, right, Carmen, we're at home. I don't give a toss, there's all these bloody people sat on loose staring at us. I'm not sure if she believes me yet, actually. So yeah, that's the first thing. So I'm feeling she's a bit more tense than normal, which is making her come back at me a little bit and maybe not quite as taking the rain as much as I would like at this stage. But you know what? The warm-up's not the place to be thinking about that. So yeah, that's the first thing I think about, is making sure I'm safe, because I don't want to be put on the floor. I'm not the bravest of riders, I'll happily admit that. So I just want to make sure that she's listening to me. <laughs> so the next thing I think about is actually all the warm-up is for for the horse, really. It's just starting to get the blood flowing through their body. So the blood's coming up from the deeper muscles in the body into the outer muscles, so that when I start asking a bit more of her, she's not going to give herself an injury or anything. Now, of course, riding is not just a sport for the horse, it's a sport for the rider. You might laugh at this, actually. Um, I went into Sports Direct, uh, well, during the 2012 Olympics, actually. I went into Sports Direct, and uh, the bloke behind the counter said to me, oh, are you going to be watching the Olympics this year? I said, yeah, I'm going to be watching all the equestrian sports. And he said, Right, it's not a sport. Horse does all the bloody work, doesn't it? I actually offered for him to come and have a lesson off me so I could prove him wrong. But unfortunately, he uh, declined, which was a real pity because I'd have had him. <laughs> so, yeah, I've given her a bit of a trot around both rain, not doing too many tight circles because I don't want to put too much strain on her body. And the next thing I'm going to be thinking about in the warm-up, so I said obviously I'm thinking about me, is my position. Now, the best place probably to start off with this is my head and neck. Because I've got a very bad habit of looking down. I'm doing a bit more tonight actually than I normally do, probably because I'm looking at calm to hide myself away from you lot. But when you start to look down, it draws your whole body forward you end up putting all the weight onto the horse's front end, which is not good. We want the horse to push and sit on their back end so that they then come up through the shoulder and then they can find the work a bit easier. So, yeah, if I get my head and neck up, that will help a little bit. So the next thing I move on to is my chest. And for those of you who've seen me without a gilet on, which is a rare thing, uh, you'll know that, unfortunately, in my opinion, I have been either cursed or blessed, it depends who you are. If you're my husband, you probably think it's a blessing, that I have rather sizable um, bazumbas. And because of that, I spend my whole life going around like this and uh, try to hide them. But in dressage or riding, you need to sit up more so that you use your core muscles and then your body can actually help the horse to the best of its ability so you can keep your balance upright to help the horse more. And then after that, I start thinking, are my legs loose? Because I want to be able to use really refined aids and not have to use up off the builder aids when I start putting the flapping like this. But if my legs are loose, I can actually think about what I'm doing a bit more. The other thing is, is I hear a lot of people 
people worrying about their heels coming up. A lot. Hello. Yeah, there we go. I hear a lot of the time people worrying about their heels coming up, and that tends to be through the rider's tension. So you tend to see that people start to grip with their legs, and then before you know it, the legs back here like that, and they haven't got the weight down into the stirrup, and then they can't sit up tall and sit into the saddle. So yeah, I'm starting to feel that she's starting to relax a bit now. She's not worrying too much that you lost her there. She's listening to me quite nicely. I still want to feel that she's a little bit more connected to my rein, but that will be for after the warm-up. Good girl. Canter transitions are pretty much the same. The way I teach a young horse to do a canter transition, it might sound really odd, is I actually ask them to go bigger and bigger in the trot until they find it. So I'm going to show that to you now. There we go. So, I just built my ride a little bit. She knows this well. If you were to do it on your horses, you might find that it takes two or three um, goes at it, or two or three circles. I'm just saying go quicker, 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 quicker. And what that's doing is it's helping her to learn how to push from her bottom. So she's learning how to push from the back. So I'm taking care of the back first. See, there, that was much easier. She's actually... Listening quite well now. There we go. That mummy needs to stop a bit more. Right. That's it. So now I'm in the canter. I'll do the same thing as I just did in the walk. As I just say with my leg. You look at my right leg. I'm doing very, very subtle little touches with my right leg. So come on, start sitting a bit more. Take a little bit more weight behind. And then once I feel she has that, then I can let her go forward again. And I'm doing that with my body. So I can say go quicker, 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 quicker and make my bum go bigger, bigger, bigger and then the same again, just bringing her smaller so I'm just going to close my body down, tighten my tummy muscles up slow the movement of my pelvis but my leg is saying, come on missus, keep cantering, good girl well done, good luck so, that's what I was thinking about and discussing with you of just the basic part of teaching your horse how to follow you. You tend to find that the legs work in diagonal pairs to the rein, so when your left leg comes on, right rein gets tighter, when your right leg comes on, left rein gets tighter. And that's when you can start to half halt better and get the horse into a better balance. So the first thing I do to start teaching sideways stuff is I'll do it on a circle. So I'm just going to put my left leg on, and when I do that, you can see that now her bottom's coming towards you, off, and she's actually starting to get heavier in this right rein. If you look, I can give my left rein, and she's staying bent because she's staying around my left leg. So that's the start of teaching a horse to start to bend through the rib cage, because when you ask a horse to bend, you want them to bend through their whole body. What I see a lot of people do is they go, oh, my horse is bending. And when she does this, she's completely losing her balance because all of her body weight's happening to go to the right because the weight of her head and neck has gone to the left. So it's just physics at the end of the day. So here, I'm keeping my reins relatively still. I'm pushing with my left leg and I'm just encouraging her to go over a bit. And this, uh, to be fair, this is actually her harder side. So she finds it much easier on the other rein because they're like us, they're either right-handed or left-handed. Now, when I've got that in the walk, We'll try and get it in the trot. And we go, she's just had a break so she thinks she's finished. <laughs> a bit like me, really. When I have a break at work, I think I should actually just go over. So, yeah, I'm just going to do exactly the same in the trot on circles. So, I'm just going to put my left leg on. That's it, good girl. And I'm just going to encourage the hind leg to move more out. Now, for an advanced horse, she would obviously be too bent, falling out through the shoulder a bit and it, she's not in the best of balances, but for a young horse, it, she's actually doing quite a good job there, really. It's not bad. And that's the start of your shoulder in, the start of your leg yield. So I could do it. Let's see, let's do it where you can all see it the best. I'm going to do it down the centre line, where I just start to ask the hind leg to move over slightly more. And then I might, depending on how she's feeling, take it into a leg yield. So if I take her down the centre line here, put my right leg on to tell her to turn, 
I'm going to half hold my left, uh, my right rein, sorry, and put my left leg on. Now it's wobbling a bit, so she's wanting to go towards the fence. But you know what? I don't mind. There we go, so you've got better by the end. Look at that. And then you can do the same with the leg heel. So I might try and do a leg heel here, where I put my right leg on. Yeah, she lost her balance, that's okay. Let's go, and put my right leg on, and now we're going to have a tantrum. There we go. So that's her little thing that she does when she finds something hard. She grabs hold of it and goes, you know what, Mum, that's too difficult, but we're off. But I'm just going to keep the pressure on when she does it. Good girl. And then when she relaxes, I'm going to take the pressure off. So there's this idea of pressure and release. Horses don't like pressure on their bodies. So when you take the pressure off, that's their little reward. So when the pressure comes on, you say, right, go quicker, go quicker. Good girl. Well done. And then when she's actually done it, I've taken the pressure off and I've relaxed. So I've let her know that that was right. What she just did was correct. So we'll just repeat this one and see if it's any better. Good. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Good. Good. So what I was feeling there is when I put my right leg on, she was actually speeding up. So I'll do it for you lot down there. So I realise I've just done it for the left hand lot. So I felt her speed up there, so she actually lost her rhythm. Any form of a horse losing its rhythm is the horse losing its balance. So this time, I might think a little bit more about the rhythm and see if it's any better. There we go. Well done. That's it. Look her. That's it. So that's the one she's finding relatively easy. And then we'll try the hard one again. So it's just repetition. I'm not going to be interrupted to get it wrong. I might just make sure that I've still got control. Because when she grabs the bit, I've got other all. But I'm not going to tell her that she's doing it wrong when she is. I'm just going to wait. See, that was better. She's arguing right now with it. She's just understood it. I know, that's tight. Let's look, girl. Look, girl. And I'm just going to send her forward, just because I feel that she's just done something she finds quite hard. And I'm just going to give her a little warm say, actually, well done. Have a little break. Have a little think about it. Feel like us, they feel when they think about what they're doing. Whilst you're having a walk breather, you might be sat up there picking your nose and thinking about what you're going to have to pee. But they're not. They're actually processing. A lot of the time, yes, sometimes when they have a break, they kind of go, oh, I'll finish now. But a lot of the time, they actually do go away and think about it. Rachel, as you can see, is a lovely rider. She's incredibly quiet, which is one of the things that I noticed when I first started helping her. Um, but because she's incredibly quiet, sometimes what, well, what we've been working on together is just getting her a little bit more effective so that the horse can respond to her aids a bit better. Now, she's riding her own horse, B. B is a 10-year-old KWPN, which is homebred, and as you can see, she's lovely. Now, Rachel's just warming up at the moment, and hopefully you're seeing the difference in the frame of a more advanced horse. And earlier I discussed about this idea of the horse sitting more behind and taking the contact more and coming more up in the shoulder and taking the bit further out. And as you can see, Bee's doing this really quite nicely. She's learned how to push more from behind and take that contact out. When the horse isn't through, so when it's not connected from its back end to its front end, you can't keep your hands still because the horse tends to fuck about with the contact and it moves from one rein to the next. So when they're not connected, even if you do keep your hands still, it's not going to be particularly effective. So all these people who come to me with the issue that their hands move, what I try and teach them to do is actually have more body awareness. So Rach, if I could just get you to ride some sort of exaggerated flexion, just by taking the contact a bit more with your inside rein. That's it, it might help you to get a bit softer as well. So, what I tend to try and get people to do is actually get aware of their hands. So instead of just thinking, right, can I keep my hands still? And the more you try and keep them still, the more tense you get, the more they move. 
His arm might get the rider to ride a flexion to the right. So they bring their right elbow back and then they put their right leg on to encourage the horse to get looser to it. There we go. So she's just got a little bit softer in the neck there. Um, and then the same to the left. So Rachel could ride what would be called a counter flexion. If she doesn't, oh, we're walking, so we can do it in the walk, that's it. So, oh no, we're changing the rein. <laughs> so, alright, do the counter flexion on the left rein. So, a counter flexion is where you ask the horse to flex its neck, so bend its neck, in the wrong direction. So, instead of the horse looking in the direction that it's going in, you're encouraging the horse to look to the outside. That's it. So, if you look at She's face, she's looking towards you Bob, but her body's going to the left. And Rachel's doing that by bringing her right back hand, uh, her right hand back slightly. And then she can do the same going back to the left. So now she can do a true flexion, which is where the horse is flexed in the direction that it's going. And all she's doing, she's doing it very, very subtly. I'll get to exaggerate. Go on, exaggerate it a bit more, right? Really bring your left hand back, or whichever hand. Bring your inside hand back, that's it. So she's gonna bring her inside hand right back, and actually, these probably thinking, what on earth are you doing, mother? That's quite hard one. I have to bend that much. Now, actually, what's interesting is when Rachel did that, she encouraged B to just get a little bit looser in her hand. So B's obviously a little bit tense. It's a big deal for a horse being in here. Um, B's a little bit, what I'd say, a bit tight, just in front of the saddle. So she needs to just let go a little bit more so she can start to use her back more. And when Rachel was starting to flex her, she was encouraging her to be more supple and looser. What I wanted to help you with with Rachel is starting to look at the more advanced lateral work. So with Carmen, all I expected was I put my inside leg on and put my weight slightly over to the inside and she moved away from it. Now, with B, because she's a little bit more advanced, what we want to see starting to happen is as the horse's inside hind starts to step underneath her body, that she's staying a bit more upright in the shoulder, so it's creating a bit more lift. And as you can see, now that Rachel's starting to ride shoulder in, shoulder forward, which is where you ask the horse's shoulders to come to the inside, and the hind leg or the hind quarters are to the outside, so the horse's legs end up going on three tracks. And this three tracks, what that's on about, is the horse's outside hind is on one line, and the horse's inside hind and outside fore is on another line, and then the horse's inside fore is on a separate line. So they end up creating three train tracks. So as Rachel's doing that, she's encouraging B to engage more. So engagement is where the horse starts to sit more and uses its hind leg more, and that creates this uphill effect where the shoulders start to lift up because the horse is taking the weight behind. So she's doing a pretty good job at that. And if you watch Rachel's inside leg, she's actually riding every stride. So every stride she's going on, off, on, off, on, off. So her leg is telling the horse's inside hind what rhythm to go at. Now, when the horse starts to get a bit more advanced in it, one thing that Rachel and I have been working on at the moment to try and get a little bit more expression and lift in the lateral work is changing the rhythm. Because you tend to find that baby horses, they lose the rhythm quite easily. Whereas more advanced horses stay in a good rhythm. So actually one of the best ways to start to get the horse thinking about what its legs are doing is to change the rhythm. So if you could maybe ride a leg heel across the stool, if you can get to the other side, it's quite wide this stool, and then just start the leg heel with maybe a slower rhythm rate, and then as you go through it, build it into a bigger rhythm. So there, the horse is stepping a really small step, and now hopefully Rachel can build it bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger. Yeah, so it's been finding that quite hard at the moment, so we'll try that again. That's it, just wake her up a little bit, drive a bit more forward, that's it, that's it. There we go. Good. And try again to start small, and then build bigger, and bigger, yep. Better. So there, when the ribbon's increasing, you can see that she's then actually stretching her legs across more, 
So she's covering more ground. And it's a really good suckling up exercise, this, to get the horse, that better, to get the horse really stretching behind the saddle so that their back becomes more supple and then that helps the rider to sit down. Now, obviously, Rachel's in sitting trot. I spent the entire time on Carmen in a rising trot. Now, I have started sitting trot with Carmen, but it's one of those, you start using it more with a stronger horse. You don't want to start sitting on their back when they're too weak. And they'll let you know when they're ready. If you start doing sitting trot on a horse that's not ready, you're going to feel like you're getting bounced all over the shop. But when the horse is ready and strong enough, you'll feel that they actually start to stay soft over their back. Very nice. Now, connecting this to what I was on about earlier with Carmen, if you remember rightly, I was discussing about the idea of connecting the inside leg to outside rein. So what's happening is when Rachel was asking B to go sideways there, is when her inside leg was coming on, B was getting more connected in the outside rein. And then what told B to go sideways rather than quicker was Rachel was half halting with her body, so she was holding her body, not letting the horse speed up, and she was half halting with the outside rein. So the outside rein was creating a block, as it were. So instead of the leg being able to go forward because the leg said to it to go quicker, the rein creates like a block or a wall. So the leg goes, well, I've got nowhere else to go but sideways. So that's what then, in the end, creates the sideways effect. So yeah, that's the start of the lateral work. Now, we've got a little bit of the shoulder in and the um, leg yields there. Those, in terms of the beginning lateral work, that's the most simple because you're expecting the horse to move away from the leg. Now, Rachel's just playing a little bit there with the Traver and the Ronda. <laughs> and Traver, or half path, is the first time that you're expecting the horse to go against your leg. So here she's riding a Traver, which is where the shoulders are on the track, the hind leg is on the inside track, and he's looking in the direction that she's going. So she's bent to the left, but moving over to the left as well. So Rachel's doing it in a perfect position for you to see it. Obviously, B's just starting this. You can see she's getting a little because she's sick she's got that part. So her rhythm goes a bit slower. And Rachel's doing a good job at just helping her gain her confidence in it. So you don't want to put too much pressure on the horse at the low level. You just want them to understand what they're doing. That's it. Good. So what's really hard for the horse to understand with this is obviously until now, whenever you put your leg on or put any pressure on with your leg, you have taught them to move away from it. But if you look at Rachel's inside leg here, she's wrapping B very nicely around it. And eventually, once B's a little bit more advanced in it and is understanding it better, Rachel's then going to be able to ask more energy from her inside leg, so that then she gets more lift through the shoulder and gets more expression. So now she's starting to ride the half path. So the half path is exactly the same as the traver, but you're going across the diagonal. So in effect, all that half path is, is a traver across the diagonal. So the horse is looking in the direction it's going in. It's bent in the direction it's going in. That's it. So, if I was to be critical, I'd just say that the rhythm's just getting stodgy. So that's where Rachel's doing a very, very good job, is that when she's feeling that B's getting a bit soft... Where are you going now, are you? <laughs> When she's feeling that B's getting it stuck, she's not saying, come on, get on with it. She's actually then riding in the shoulder in, so she's encouraging B to get wrapped around her inside leg again. See, that was much better. So she's encouraging B to get wrapped around that inside leg again to give her the confidence. So it's saying, right, don't forget the basics you've learned. The basics you've learned is connecting inside leg to outside breath. That's it. So she might use the shoulder in to then just get the trot a little bit more forward so she gets the energy in it. Very nice. Yeah, good. Give her a little break. Next in the arena is the gorgeous carry. And Galanti is an 11 year old, although he looks like a stallion, he's not. Um, and Carrie's had him since he was three. 
So she, bless her, has actually done all the work with him herself. And she just recently went to the NCR European and uh, really held her own there, which was fantastic. And you can see why, because the land is astonished. Now, what I loved about the fact that I asked Carrie to come and join me was that dressage, you tend to see a lot of the time that judges give high scores to all the flashy warm bloods and uh, it's quite difficult for them to give scores sometimes to other breeds. But Carrie is doing a very, very good job with hers. I deserve an escape for Rachel, this is not to get out. Carrie's doing a very good job with her, and because she's gone through the correct training process, she's getting very good marks. So, with Carrie, what we're going to show you, hopefully, is a more advanced way of going. Now, the first thing I notice when I look at Galanti is his friend. Carmen was obviously like this quite low, quite down, not quite connecting up yet. B was quite nice and in the middle where you kind of get the horse's frame to be about a bit more off, a bit flatter. But if you look at Galante, he's now got the advanced frame. So he's more up in the shoulder, carries able to stick him more because he's stronger. He's stronger than the others. He's been doing this for much longer. She's able to get the horse to really sit down and carry more weight on its back end because she's spent many, many years training him and the horse is now strong enough to do it. And you'll notice as well that she's a lot more steady in the contact than the others because he's more confident in the way that he's going. Carrie is a beautiful rider and it's actually very difficult to see what she's doing because she's doing absolutely everything with her body. What we'll look at to start off with is maybe just a more established half pass where the horse can keep a better rhythm because it's in a better balance. So I don't mind Carrie, you can either do it in top of the or entirely up to you. Galanti looks like he's enjoying showing off. <laughs> right, so. Even looking at the water counter transition there, you can see that the whole transition was smoother than what uh, Rachel was able to do with B, and that's because it's a more advanced horse and he's understanding the exercise back there. So Carrie's going to ride a half pass across the school, and you can see that she's able to keep his body easily wrapped around the leg, and instead of the horse going slower and flatter, He's now starting to lift and get more bounce in his body. And you'll also see that she's able to go much deeper in it. So Rachel Flatter, when she was doing it earlier, she was just about able to get to the centre line. Carrie, when she came across from the deep corner, she actually nearly hit X then, so she nearly hit the middle of the floor. So the horse is finding incredibly easy to actually move over. And all Carrie's doing is she's rotating her body round slightly to the right. She's putting her outside leg on a little bit just to encourage or to hold the hind leg over. So she's turn the hind leg to come over. The inside leg will be ever so slightly on to wrap the horse around her leg. And then the rest is just his balance. And there we go, we've got a flying change. Carrie's really pleased with those because she's been struggling with them and they've just recently suddenly come into their own and Galanti's understanding what he's doing. He used to get a little bit het up left him, wasn't he? Just to change he found him a bit too exciting. So, look, there you are. Happens to the best of us. But again, look, Carrie, she's laughing. She's going, oh, he made a mistake. She got a bit tense. You didn't say, what the fuck are you doing? Bloody well get across that stool. Do that half pass properly. She just laughed. Gave the horse a bit of a pat. And now she's just going to repeat. But he hasn't done the half pass from this direction yet. He's a horse. He might have spotted one of you lot scratching your head or something and thought that you were going to try and kill it. So she's just going to repeat it and then hopefully this will be better. And if it's not, she'll just repeat it again until it just gets easier. So it is better. She's getting a little bit tense when he's getting towards the end. 
but it's possible that this is also his harder side, so he's less confident in it. So the last thing you want to do is tell the horse off and tell him that he's a terrible little boy, or big boy actually, he's not exactly small, is it? You tell him that he's terrible for doing it. So actually, what's interesting is she did it away from you lot then, and it was far better. So obviously, he's seeing something that's different from the left front. And this is where horses are fascinating, in that they've got an eye either side of their head, and what they see in their left eye isn't necessarily see what they see in their right eye. So he could be seeing something completely different off the left front to what he was seeing on the right. Pirouette. What pirouettes are, if you don't know, is it's the most high degree of difficulty for a horse to sit and engage and also start to wrap it around the ground of the rider's inside leg and go sideways. Now, a pirouette, you want the hind leg to stay on the inside and you want the shoulders to rotate around the hind leg. So you want the shoulders to go around the hind leg. So the best sort of pirouettes, if you watch Charlotte do Dan do them, is the horse's inside hind will go no bigger than the dinner plate. So the horse's inside hind is down, and the shoulders will rotate around that inside leg. So it feels like you're lifting the shoulder around it. If you've taught your horse how to half pass and you've taught it how to half pass well, in the process you might ride half passes on a circle. So that's what Carrie's doing now, she's actually just riding a little bit of travel, a bit of half pass sensation around the circle, and then gradually she's going to spiral in. So she'll gradually make the circle smaller and smaller and smaller until the horse is just finding it easy. I'm not sure how big she's going, I'm going to move that before I get ran over. There we go. So there he starts to find it a little bit hard, so that's okay. Carrie's just going to repeat it, so she'll actually let him out, and then she'll come back in. So no, that wasn't quite right. So just remember, this is quite a, this is a really hard exercise for a horse to do this. They have to take a lot of weight on their inside hind. And all Carrie's doing with her body is she's half halting, she's tightening her tummy muscles up, she's telling him to wait, so she's slowing the rhythm down, and then her leg is going tap tap, tap tap, tap tap, in the rhythm to encourage him to keep the rhythm. And then gradually she's going to eventually be able to go small. That's it. And what I love doing is when the horses start going to this stage, listening to the footfall, is you can really hear a clear tempo and it sounds less like the horse is sort of plodding into the ground and it sounds like they're lifting or stepping really, really gently. And that's when you get the lightness of the forehand, you get the forehand really coming up. So again, she's just coaxing him really, really gently just to encourage him to sit down. And now, because he did a good job of that, she's just going to give him something easy to do and just say, right, thank you very much, that was lovely. Do something you find easy so you get his confidence. The best horses are the ones that are confident, that can come in and actually listen to the rider because they understand what they're doing. If you notice, none of these horses have been spooky in here tonight, and it's because they trust their riders. We all work very, very hard to get that trust so that they actually believe that we can take charge and they're going to be all right. Yes, they can still be horses, they can still have their moments, just the same as kids do, but they're trusting and believing in their riders. Good boy. So they're really hard ones. <laughs> and now you can see, because she's actually let him to go away and think about what he did, he's now finding it easier. Lovely. You want to do one the other way or are you happy with that? You want to do one the other way? Yeah? So we show off with a flying turn. <laughs> so that, as I say, what Galanti's been struggling with a little bit is his changes. They used to be a lot more hectic than that. Now that wasn't a clean change. When you do a flying change, you want to see that the horse changes its back end and its front end at the same time. And obviously Glamour is a little bit tense, Carrie might be as well, but she, she actually looks quite happy up there. Are you feeling happy? <laughs> but again, she's not going to be too much for getting it wrong. There's nothing wrong with getting it wrong. 
So she's just going to repeat the process on this rein. Now, as I said earlier, horses find one rein easier than the other. This one, if you look at him, he's getting tighter in his back. Can you see he's like bouncing at carriage? And this is his dodgy side. This is the side that he finds hard. So, Delante, clearly right-handed and not left-handed. But it's through practice and repetition that she carries is going to get it better and better and better. So she'll just do, she'll go to the point where she thinks the horse is trying, but he's finding it hard enough without pushing him too much. So she'll probably just repeat it again. So she's just starting with the basics. She's saying with her inside leg, if you look at the rhythm, look at her left leg, she's going cancer, cancer, cancer. And she's telling his inside mind, to step quicker under his body because he needs to step under it quicker in order to take the weight on that left hind. Yeah. And then obviously he's just finding it difficult, which is fine. But I don't do nothing about it. There's nothing wrong with the horse finding it difficult. If you told me to start writing with my left hand as opposed to my right, um, you wouldn't be able to read it. And same as us, if they find something hard, they try and avoid it. Because I feel much happier when you let me just go hard and I'm just looking at you. Right, so we'll just try one more. <coughs> yeah, because again, the most obvious thing is the loss of rhythm. It's like bouncing and it comes back, but that's not a big deal. There's, and there's the tension comes in. So that's fine. It's just going to take practice. I mean, he's only 11. He's not what I would consider an old horse, he's just starting, and what's lovely is you see some horses going out at nine doing his one three, and I personally think that actually you're putting far too much strain on their bodies when you start, oh, a lot better, you're putting far too much strain on their bodies, um, and trying to train them that quick, because that's when injuries occur, I mean, you see a lot of all these young horses that go out and do the young horse classes, they might be fantastically flashy, and going incredibly well. However, you don't really see them again unless the rider's very lucky. You don't really see them again at the higher levels. And that's because the riders put far too much pressure on their bodies and they're not able to cope with it at your age. It's still growing. I mean, warm blood typically stop growing when they're eight. So if you're pushing a warm blood to do Grand Prix by the time it's nine, you are putting a lot of strain on their bodies. So with um, the act and massage, as I said, even starting with Carmen, it's about activating the hind leg. So getting the horse's hind leg to start stepping quicker. And you'll see with Galanti where he tends to struggle a bit with the piaf is he loses the rhythm. So what Carrie's giving me the whip for, I'm not going to stand here and beat him up. The last thing I'm going to do, horses should never be scared of the whip, is I'm just going to help carry encourage him to just get a little bit more energy behind so here i'm just touching a little bit with the whip tipping him like a fly yeah i'm not giving him hard taps at all and i'm just going to help him a bit with the rhythm that's it i tap a hard help uh, more harder than that and you can see just by me tapping i need to be stepping in the rhythm myself just by me tapping it's helping him get into a little bit of a rhythm so he's just learned this and where i would start teaching this is with the young horses i start teaching them actually if you touch their good boy if you touch their leg bless them, if you touch their leg with the whip they have to lift that leg and you can see he's just he's taking little tiny bits of oh my god this is hard <laughs> so he's going too quick in it at the moment bless him. but it's a start yeah he's starting to learn how to get the rhythm and at this stage, that's fine. You don't want any more than that. Good boy. That's good. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's really hard. But he's actually very brave doing it right beside you lot. We'll do it for you lot down this one side as well. Oh, 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 oh we've gone very quick. So, we're not going to beat him up. Carry just gave him a pat. I've taken the pressure off. Let's get him to relax. That's it. We've gone quick again. And then, because he's just getting tense in it, because he's still finding it hard, Carrie's just going to let him drop forward. So, again, no pressure. I am a... Get on with it! 
I've just explained to him that all we want is for him to do a little job. And what's nice now is Carrie's just trotting him forward. She's just getting a little bit more energy. So she's reminding him about the basics. She's reminding him when her leg touches him, he needs to get more energetic. And then she's allowing him forward. So she's just reminding him about what I was teaching Carmen, which is when I put my body in a rhythm, you go in that rhythm. When I put my leg on, that means activate. It doesn't mean go quicker, because if you notice in the PF, when she was putting her leg on, he was speeding up. So he forgot about the basics, yeah? Forgot that the leg means energize, it doesn't mean speed up. So there, she's actually letting him travel a little bit more forward, so he's gaining more confidence in it. And because he's going more forward now, he's getting better in it. Good lad. So it's a work in progress. He's not at the opera yet, but he's got the fundamental basics in there to get to Grand Prix within the next year or two. There's no reason why he won't. He just needs to gain his confidence. What we haven't discussed very much in this is the cool off. When you've worked a horse, you want to give them time to stretch out. Now what's quite good about here is it's a relatively long walk back to the yard, but sometimes you're in a smack bang next to the yard. So you see a lot of this, right? Go right, come on, work really, really hard, and then they get off to get back in the stable. Um, that is not the best thing to do, because it tends to be in those situations where the horse can... Ooh, ooh. Look, the Iberian panic then. <laughs> Yeah, it tends to be that when the horse finishes, you don't want to just get off. You want to give them time to recover, because if you do, you tend to find that they actually get fitter the next day that you ride them. And the best time to stretch muscles off is actually at the end. Lots of people think that the warm-up is the time to stretch, and actually it's the worst thing to do is to stretch a cold muscle, because they, there's not enough blood in the muscles to actually stretch them, so you can actually strain things. And if you were watching Carrie warm up at the start, yes, she might have let him be a bit longer in his frame, but she wouldn't necessarily have encouraged too much stress. She'd have just been thinking, same as I was thinking, actually, is right, can I actually stay on and have control? And she would have been thinking, <clears throat> how is he feeling? She would have been thinking about her position. And, uh, Yes, he would have been in a slightly more advanced train for the younger horses because he's a more advanced horse, but she wouldn't have been asking him to stretch. So now as she's stretching him, she's encouraging him to take the rein longer and lower. Now, there's a big difference to a horse being long and low as opposed to Rolka. For those of you who don't know, Rolka is defined as the hyperflexion of the horse's neck. And you see a lot of Dutch and German riders do it and it has actually been banned in FEI competitions now because recent research has shown that it puts a hell of a lot of strain and causes a lot of pain to the horse's vertebrae in its neck. Now, Rolka, the big difference is you can see that the rider is literally pinning the horse's nose to its chest. It's actually quite graphic to watch. I luckily have never seen it in person, but obviously I've seen pictures and videos of riders doing it and it doesn't look very nice for the horse. So the difference is here is Carrie's encouraging Galante to take his neck out and down. And yes, occasionally he does look calm and does he come a little bit behind the vertical, but that is not Rolka. You see, it actually happened to a good friend of mine recently. She put a picture up of her horse on Facebook and one of the bloody Facebook warriors came after her, so that was no behind the vertical was getting trained correctly. It's not. It's actually one of the processes of training the horse, because that's not culture. It's not being pinned in in slices. And you tend to find horses get better if you actually can put the horse's head and neck where you want them. Can you have it too high? Can you have it just right? Can you have it just low? Two vents to the right, two vents to the left. If you practice riding 
all these different positions rather than just keeping your horse in a competition frame all the time, you'll find they'll get stronger and more supple more quickly and they'll be less tense in your hand and they'll be a lot more willing to work for you and they'll just generally feel looser and happy. So yes, that's the end of Carrie and Galanti. Thank you very much for your help. So Sam Walton is George's mother and she has raised a lot of money for the Cavalier Centre in Manchester, Georgia. So I wanted to thank Sam for all of her help with this event. And uh, thank you for, from all of us. Another person I would like to thank is Charlotte. Where's Charlotte? <laughs> I'm on. Charlotte beautifully agreed to groom for me tonight. And uh, she's done an amazing job looking after Carmen at Acton Hall. She is the yard manager at Acton Hall. And her and all of her team do an incredible job looking after all the horses there. So if any of you are looking for a livery yard, I believe we're full at the moment, but I would strongly recommend Acton. Or, I would strongly recommend Acton Hall as the yard to be at. And the last person to thank, who it felt like a while ago that we were sat at a little table coming up with the idea of um, doing this event, is Carol. I can believe that she's over there. You need to come here, lady. Here she comes. So Carol and I, we went to the pub and we went, right, what are we going to do? And uh, we ended up coming up with a load of ideas of how to run everything. And then uh, probably about, was it about three weeks before the event, we went, shit, it gets dark at half eight. Right? We need to get some lights sorted. So, <laughs> I do apologise for the noise of generators, I hope I haven't got to yours too much, however, like the necessary. So thank you very much for doing this video. Thank you still not here. <laughs> oh, she is here. Here's your powers. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming and riding and uh, showing your beautiful horse. Round of applause for Rachel, because she's very beautiful. So last thing of me is to thank you lot for coming. It's been a pleasure speaking to you all and sharing with you all what I'm truly passionate about. And I hope you've all had an amazing time. Um, we are now, I think, we're going to congregate down at the bottom to go to the fantastic traffic zone. So I hope you've all bought some uh, tickets. Have some more please and drink if you wish. And uh, Georgia, this is to you. Thank you very much, sweetheart. God bless everyone. Boat like a bird upon the wing Steer for the north For there my heart does lie Now I heed the call From your wailing winds Raise my arms Embrace the sky